baboons, the African bush, high-tech GPS instruments, and understanding how our brain works. Now let me set the stage here. Have you ever tried to make a decision with your friends? Where do you want to eat? I guess I could go anywhere that has a brewery or some place that has craft beer in general. That would be really good. I want broccoli. Chinese, maybe? I think I would like a smoothie. Or maybe seafood. Gluten-free? This new beer, it's like this beer that tastes like coffee and bacon at the same time. It's amazing. Everybody and this could go on all night, but eventually we have to make a decision. You could be a dictator. Okay, stop. I'm making the decisions here. We're going to my place. The risk of being a dictator, though, is that the You've rest of the group might disagree with your decision and not follow your lead. Luckily, we have lots of ways to get to the decisions we make. We can vote. And in our society, there are decision-making rules. Now, what those rules are varies a bit by the group. Now, when animals live in groups, they have to find a way to make choices, like where to go looking for food. But how do they make those decisions? I mean, do they somehow collectively vote and then go with the majority? Or are there specific individuals that lead the group? And that's exactly what this team of scientists is studying with a small troop of baboons in Kenya. And not only did I get the coolest opportunity to go on the trip. Baboons are out, you gotta be a little bit careful. But I also got the privilege to talk to all the scientists and figure out what their research is actually saying. This type of data are really complex. Months at a time of us feel very depressed, like we're banging our heads against the wall. Now before I walk you through all the cool things of this study, I think it's really important that we set the stage for what we know about how groups make decisions. Now some of the most impressive displays of animal movement can be seen in fish schools and bird flocks. They can move as a group if each individual follows a set of local rules. You see, if someone gets too close to the right, you move to the left. And you speed up, you slow down. You can actually predict the dynamics of groups and animals like this with certain mathematical models. But we are not birds or fish, so how do you figure out how groups make decisions in more complex societies? That's where the baboons come in. So this is the first time anyone has ever tracked an entire primate social group. So over the course of two weeks, that is exactly what we did. We put GPS tags on 25 baboons, which is nearly the entire group. And then their location was tracked every second. And that allowed the team to see how the group moved. And it looked like this. Seeing the GPS video of it alone is pretty fascinating. But of course they had to crunch the numbers and figure out how the groups were coordinating their movements. Now having spent time filming and watching this group myself, I kind of assumed that the large dominant males, which have the first access to the best food and places to sleep, would naturally be choosing where the group goes. But that's not actually what's happening. Here's what they found. First thing, leadership ability is unrelated to dominance, sex, and size class. And that means that they weren't able to find any evidence that the big males or the large females had any influence on where the group actually went. Instead, they actually found that there was some sort of voting process and it went something like this. So say you have a group of baboons, then one group of individuals goes this way. They are the initiators. Then you have another group of initiators breaking off this way. So here's the question, who do these baboons follow? Now, if the angle is small, say under about 90 degrees, then the direction of travel is in between, essentially splitting the difference. But if the angle is large, then they have to choose one way or the other. Now, this is where the voting comes in. Baboons tend to follow a majority rule. Now, if the difference in the number of initiators supporting each direction is large, like this, then the baboons almost always go with the majority. But if it's small, then they'll choose one or the other direction at random. Now the fact that the angle matters might seem strange, but in fact, this pattern is exactly what's predicted based on computer models designed to simulate the behavior of flocking birds and schooling fish. And it might actually represent a way of simplifying the decision-making process. Imagine you and your group of friends can't decide what restaurant you want to go to. Now it might simplify your decision if first you decided whether to travel uptown or downtown, and then you choose a restaurant from the subset of options that remain. A lot of this behavior is driven by actually individuals just responding to their local neighbors. So there you have it. We're all making decisions based on rules. Sometimes the rules are complex, sometimes they turn out to be surprisingly simple, especially in complex societies like these baboons. Obviously, thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe. We like visiting researchers, seeing what they're doing, and trying to translate that real research into stuff that's really fun to watch. And if you want to actually see the video of all these GPS movements just to watch, because it's really cool, then um, click right here. We always get up at four in the morning so that we can go and uh, look for the baboons and then capture them and take good care of them and work them up. 
for science and release them. There's a lot of things that can eat you here in Africa, but we're kind of learning how to negotiate that while we're here. I have to tell our Uber driver, he's coming in five minutes. Let's make a decision quick.